Bethany Maddox Sands, thank you so much for joining us on USTA.com. And things are progressing well here at the Australian Open for you. You and Megan Shaughnessy still going in the women's doubles. Yep, me and Megan actually just finished our match. Um, we played uh, Benisova and Strakova, and they're a tough team. They'd just come off a win off Sydney, beaten some good teams. So we were ready today for, for a great match, and it was. I mean, they, it was tough. Uh, but we pulled through and I'm excited to go into the next round. Um, still in mixed doubles as well, so have a lot of tennis to go. How are you enjoying the Australian Open? Uh, Australian Open is one of my favorite play, uh, events. They, they do a great job here. I mean, you're here in Melbourne. You get to stay in the city, walk around. It, it's a great atmosphere. I, th I think the, uh, the fans here at Australian Open are probably some of the best. I mean, they get all body painted up, got flags around there, and, and they just get really into the tennis. Um, I heard a, a rumor, though, that they had uh, the highest attendance ever the other day. And it just goes to show you how much the uh, people here in Australia love sports. The last time I saw you was in San Diego at the final of the Fed Cup. There was an incident at SeaWorld. Your ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Notice I'm not wearing any rings I now. I notice you're not wearing any <laughs> rings now. The dolphin almost ate your ring. Um, when you went back, did you tell, what happened? Did you tell your husband what happened? It, well, it's funny. I actually called him and told yeah. him immediately. I thought, I mean, it was pretty funny. Obviously, um, he's an in insurance, so yep. all, all my stuff was insured, but, um, you know, we uh, we were doing tricks with the dolphins, and they, you know, respond to all different hand signals. And one of them, you know, we scared them. So, you know, one, two, three, and my ring just plops into the water. And everyone, everyone kind of went silent. And they were like, "Was that your wedding ring?" And I was like, "Yeah, it's right there." I mean, but it, it was close. I mean, the dolphin was sitting there, you know, with his mouth open. So I'm just glad it was kind of a little to the left. But yeah. uh, needless to say, I, I think it was caught like in action on camera somewhere. And I was like, "Oh." <laughs> so. <laughs> Anyway, my husband and I was laughing about it too, but probably more because we were able to retrieve it. <laughs> yeah. um, Bethany, you, obviously you, you get good results on court. You, you've come through qualifying at so many tournaments. Um, tell us about the mental side of the game for you when you've got to go through those arduous qualifying rounds at so many tournaments. Yeah, last year, I mean, I really got my ranking up based on just being consistent through qualities. I mean, every tournament I played, I, I pretty much had to win three matches to get into the tournament before, you know, even everything even started. Um, but I think in a way it helped me. I got a ton of matches last year. My record was pretty good. I, you know, I played some top players and, you know, there's a couple tournaments where you know there was top 50 players in qualities so it, you know there's no slouch draws in the qualities um, but you know I, it came down to me getting a lot of matches and staying healthy throughout the year and that's that's why my ranking went up that's why I'm feeling good and um, you know taking it in, into this year. Did, does it take a different mindset to play qualifying compared to the regular main draw of a tournament? You know, you don't think of it any different. I mean, it, it is different just in the fact that, you know, the tournament hasn't started. You know, there's certain things that aren't ready at a tournament just because everyone's waiting until the Monday where it starts. But uh, for me personally, and I think for other qualifiers, it's, it's a match. It counts for your win-loss record. You know, you make money if you win, you don't if you lose. And, it's, and that's just the way it goes, just like any main draw. And I think it, every match is important. Now, you're also known for what you wear on court, and everybody talks about that. Sometimes more about that than the <laughs> tennis. Now, you played the Hopman Cup alongside John Isner, and there were some pretty out there clothes that you wore there. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to have to say Nicholas Mahout outdid me. Yes, he did. I mean, plain and simple. I was, uh, he wore his partner's Lacoste dress for our mixed doubles exhibition, if you will. And uh, he's a blast. I mean, he's hilarious. Obviously, had his whirlwinds uh, five setter match at Wimbledon with Isner, and then they repeated, you know, a match in Hopman Cup. But, um, you know what? I think that just brings more fun to the game. I mean, there's too many times, again, I'll say, I'm sure I've said this before, you know, players are dressed the same head to toe. And you almost, on TV, I can't even tell who's who. You know, both have blonde hair or something like that. I mean, I, you know, what's a fan to think? So, so, you know, it's it's my personality. I'm like that off the court. Um, fashion's always been an interest for me. And, um, you know, it's it's about being fun, staying relaxed. And I play better when I have that mentality anyways. So how do you actually choose? What makes you decide what you're going to wear? 
Um, well, the last year, year and a half, or I should say a couple of years, I've been wearing Under Armour's gear on the court. Um, they've uh, been pretty lenient. I've, I've worn stuff from, you know, their snowboarding section, from their camo gear. You know, I, I bring a lot of stuff. I'll go online, mix and match colors. And But as far as the day before the match, it's really, I'll probably set out two outfits. And, you know, I like black and I like colors. So generally, you know, if it's not too hot, I, I like to be in all black. So, um, but, you know, there's no, there's really no pattern, I guess. I kind of go with my mood, how I'm feeling, and, and that's what I wear. You, you must then get incredibly depressed with Wimbledon. And you can't <laughs> wear white. I know. <laughs> I'm trying to sneak, like, every color I can get. Because, you know, under the skirt, you can wear a color. Sweatbands can have, have a color in it, and your headband can have color. So, you know, Wimbledon, you got to come out with, like, different cuts and stuff, because obviously the color is, is white. Well, maybe, what about painting a different color on every fingernail? Uh, you know what? I, I haven't gotten there yet, um, but Wozniacki's actually always got pretty colorful nails. And there's a few girls on tour that all do their own nails, and they're like, they're awesome at it. I, I'm just, not, I'm not that talented. Not so really? <laughs> I'll have to go over and get them done from one of them. Do you, do you take advice with what you wear? I mean, when you look at Serena, Serena can also be a little bit, OTT sometimes with what she wears. Um, Venus is, is creating a stir with some of her stuff. Do you look to them? Do you, do you talk to them? Because the, both of the girls love what you wear a lot of the time. Yeah, it's, it's funny actually because we have talked about fashion um, in the locker room and stuff. And personally, Venus's dress, um, the yellow with the crisscross, I love that dress. I thought it was cool. I know some people were like, oh, maybe, maybe not. I thought it was great. And uh, you know what? Anything they come out with, it's their personality. It's what they like. And yeah, obviously some people aren't gonna like it but you know if if you like it go for it I mean I they've come out with some cool stuff I mean everything from Serena's from the high boots and and whatever I mean she's she's done cool and everyone still talks about it so you know I think it's good for tennis you have got a personality there's no doubt about it you're, you're bubbly you're effervescent you really look like you love life um, on the court and all that um, is that a total reflection of you Definitely. I mean, it's. Uh, I definitely go through certain stages of my life, and my husband can attest to that, where I'm down in the dumps and you know not feeling great. But for the most part, you know, I've really come to think that life is short, and I only have a little bit of time to even play tennis or even to to make a difference in somebody's life or to say something nice to somebody. And I, and I really want to do that. And. Um, so I really just take advantage and I try to live in the moment. I'm really not a big thinking of the past, you know, worried about the future. It's all you can control is now. So that's hopefully how I come across. On that note, Bethany Maddox-Sands, thank you for joining us on USTA.com. Thank you very much.